Hi, I'm Peggy Barry Bartz, and we're back here for another episode of You're Kind of a Big Deal. My guest today, I'm so excited, a year ago we talked about this, is Kevin Cook. He is the former co-pastor of Christ the King Church on Drainer Road, and he was an angel. Well, he is an angelic person. He was an angel in The Little Drummer Boy, and I met him there when I uh, visited and sang with the groups and whatnot. And he's a wonderful person. He has a wonderful story. Just to remind you, I do believe that everyone is kind of a big deal because we're all made in the image and likeness of God and we all have gifts to share and our light to shine. Kevin is a very shining and funny man. And so he's gonna tell us his story, how he ended up in ministry. Welcome, Kevin. (laughs) Thank you. You're already laughing. The angels are already hitting you on the shoulder. <laughs> I'm still laughing about the big deal thing. <laughs> well, you are kind of a big deal. Yeah, the emphasis on kind of, I guess. But, yes, exactly. But for the reason right. you That's said, to keep I, I get you humble. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Well, thank you for letting me be here today. I'm so glad you're here. We were at uh, a graduation party, I believe. We when were? we first talked about this, yeah. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that. It was, um, you know, Lauren Chapman's graduation oh, party. Oh, yes, 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 mm-hmm. yes. In yeah. the rain. In the rain, yes. Yeah. But it was nice. It might brought a lot of nice people. Right. Now, I know we're near a boat. No, we're near the, wa- we're near the ocean. Yes. Not really, but I love real. water. Yeah, and, you know, that Jesus guy kept talking about water and being the water of life, so it's kind of appropriate there. We're out in front of the ocean right now, <laughs> which is my favorite place to be. Yeah, and I love it. Yeah, good. All right, so tell me, because I don't know the story of how you got into ministry. You're aw- awfully funny to be in a music ministry, uh, to be in a ministry position. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't really in a funny uh, occupation before I got involved in ministry. I was in my 30s. I was a vice president of a computer software company. And my wife and I knew that something was up as it related to what God wanted to do with my life, more than what we, where we were. And so we kept thinking it was teacher, oh. teacher, teacher. And then one day I'm looking in the bathroom mirror and brushing my teeth and I turn around to my wife who's in the bedroom and I said, I know what it is. It's preacher. <gasps> it's preacher. Because that word had come to me. It was, I'm just brushing my teeth and the word preacher uh, came to my, and, and Isaiah 6. And I went, okay. Well, I was a pretty young Christian. I didn't know what that meant. And then you didn't know what preacher meant. I didn't know what Isaiah six meant. Oh, okay. And so it's when I when I looked it up, then it made perfect sense. To wow. Me. Now I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but you know a lot of people really truly have revelations while they're standing in the bathroom. I, I mean, this is like you can actually Google that. They do, but I think it has to do with you're you're in the middle of tasks that just have to do daily, and you're not focusing on something else, you're just relaxed. And so there, the spirit can speak to us and there is lots of water in the bathroom. I'm not joking, you can, you're laughing, but people, Well, there's you just can so really many Google jokes this. you can go off <laughs> No, this is very true. Lots of people have a lot of revelations when they take a shower or they're just doing vacuuming. That's a really good place to come up with ideas. So yeah, oh, yeah. God gets our attention in all kinds of ways. Mm-hmm. And the God I worship has an incredible sense of humor. So. Well, he does. Right. That's why he chose me. Right. <laughs> That's why the word says that he uses the foolish things of the world <laughs> to confound the wise. That's how I qualified. Well, you know, there was this guy named Peter. Uh, he was one of the apostles. Yeah. I call him clueless Peter. Peter was uh, kind of always making mistakes, yeah. kind of screwing up. And then when all of a sudden done, Jesus put him in charge. So uh, I, I, I remember we talked about that once and you said you're sort of like a Peter guy. So I, I would relate to him. Yeah. I love <laughs> Peter. Peter was a, because he's like all of us. We don't get it. And then someone says, no, 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 here's the deal. And you go, oh, me? I'm supposed to do that? (laughs) So teacher, preacher. Okay, carry on. So I I said, uh, well, honey, we we really need to continue to pray about this. And and we did. And we really felt that that's really what, the more we, the days went by, the more affirmed we felt in our hearts that that's really what 
God wanted us to do. And it was almost as if I had said, um, or I sensed that I am entering into my purpose. This is what I was made to do. So you just ha you just sense it in your heart. But I was such a young Christian that I was kind of silly in my faith. I was young in my faith, and so I, I did crazy things. Like the Bible talks about uh, putting a fleece out, and it's, a, it's really kind of a silly thing to do um, if, when your faith really isn't formed. You're, you're kind of just grasping at straws for God to show you something. Okay. And that's how I, you know, and, but at the time it was innocent, and I think God kind of chuckles and he says, okay. You know, same way with Gideon, who it's, it's written about, had used a fleece. So what we did was we said, well, let's get with this pastor that we were serving. We were involved in youth ministry, uh, you know, as volunteers. We loved it, and it was with uh, John, Pastor John Waters and Phyllis, his wife. Uh, he was the youth pastor at Christ the King Church at the time. He's okay. now the pastor, senior pastor of River of God Church in Romeo, and he's one of the greatest men I've ever known. And if one day I could grow up to be like him, that would be awesome. I and know about River of God Church in Romeo, yes. Oh, good. Yeah. And so I, we invited uh, Pastor John and Phyllis over to the house, and, and I said to him, well, listen, don't laugh at me. Don't laugh when I tell you this, but the reason we've called you over here is because I have a real sense that God wants me to go into the ministry. And immediately, they burst into laughter. <laughs> I mean, like wild laughter. And I'm crushed because I'm thinking, here's this guy I really look up to, and he's just laughing at me. And, he, and I said, you guys, I asked you not to laugh. Not right. To, and, and I was feeling really down. And, I, and they said, no, no, you don't understand. We knew a year ago that God was going to call you into ministry. We're just waiting for you to catch up. Wow. And I, so that began the confirming in my heart that this really wasn't just you Your know, imagination. my imagination. See, you got confirmation. Yes. And we always do. When something's really important and you know that's the next step, someone always confirms it for you. But I needed a couple more. So I said, well, oh. <laughs> one thing, no, I really is did. Is that like the signs of Jim Carrey? You're like, God, I need a sign, and there's a whole truck full of signs? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's my favorite part of that movie. <laughs> yes, and that's why I said it, it, re it really was a kind of humorous story. So I said, I, so we ate dinner and went on with our, our time, and, and a few days went by, and I said, well, honey, I mean, the first thing's going to have to happen, the house would have to sell. When we bought this house in Oxford, uh, that house had sat on the market, which would have been like three years earlier, had sat on the market for a year and a half before we bought it. it like nobody was buying this house. Wow. And there was nothing wrong with it. But I thought, how in the world are we ever going to sell it? We would have to sell the house. I mean, there's no way we could keep it. And so I, in my prayer in the morning, I would say, Lord, if this is what you want, you have to sell the house. A week later... I'm outside cutting the grass, and this car pulls up in my driveway. And it's this British couple who are brand new to the country, and he had just gotten a job in a manufacturing place right down the road. And so he said, D listen, I'm trying to figure out how, how do we purchase a home around here? And I said, are you kidding? I said, this house is for sale. And now, the thing that's miraculous about this is that I'd had a whole bunch of realtors come in, take a look at it, and I needed the house to sell for $12,000 more than any one of them said it could. Okay. So this guy pulls in, and he says he's looking for a house. I said, well, this house is for sale. Would you like me to show it to you? Uh, uh, let me guess. There was no sign, of course. No sign of in the course. yard. <laughs> no sign at all. And I said, uh, I said, and I can have you speak to my realtor. So I took him inside, showed him the house, gave him the thing uh, gave him the the uh, uh, card to the realtor this was on Friday Saturday Monday morning they came back call, had called the realtor they wanted to buy the house the realtor had told them how much we wanted to, for the house done no negotiation whatsoever it was done oh my gosh and <laughs> I said to my wife you know, honey, okay. honey I sold the house <laughs> <laughs> so 
Was that enough signs for you yet? No, oh. absolutely not. Absolutely not. No. I like you more every day. Oh yeah, my goodness. I need goodness. another sign. I'm I was not really so, sure. I was they so drove up silly to in my face. They were even from another country. From another country, right? And I was so silly in my faith uh, that I just said, okay, well, where am I going to go to Bible school? And, I, and so where John's alma mater, I, I, he, he says, come on, we'll go, we'll go out to Elam. I, I want you to see Elam Bible Institute, which I later, you know, had went on staff. I was actually a dean at the school <laughs> later on, right? And so, but here God's preparing the way. So we go out there, we take a look at it. And on the way, I have this private fleece. I said, all right, God, I need something zany to happen, zany. And it just comes to my mind. I'm going to have a private meeting with a dean, no, not by anything that I do to make it happen. And in that meeting, we will talk about a dog. Now, why? I have no idea. Okay, you have to explain what a fleece is. A fleece is where you, you, you say to God, it, it comes from Gideon Okay. in, in the Judges. For those it, who don't know, like me. He, he threw a fleece out and he said, all right, well, you know, if you wanted to, if, if you really want me to do this, then in the morning the fleece will be wet and the ground will be dry. Oh, okay. And then he, the next day he says, all right, well, the next time the fleece will be dry and the ground will be wet. Oh, kind of like what you did with the selling the house and this and that. Exactly. Oh, so, so it's like a challenge to God. It's, it's a little bit, yeah. Like, wow. God, I, I, I'm really silly in my faith. I'm, I, I don't have tremendous amount. You got to really show me this is really what you want me to do. I have a career. You know, I'm a vice president of a computer software company that's gone from three guys to 50 guys. Okay. You know? And so I'm, I'm, and I'm making six figures. So I mean, okay, this so, is a big deal. Oh my goodness. Okay, back to the uh, unintended meeting with the dean and talking about a dog. We Good go morning. out to the school. Uh, we sit in a class at the end of the class because we're checking it out. At the end of the class, uh, Phyllis comes up and says, uh, Dean uh, Kevin wants to meet with you. Uh, and your wife uh, after lunch. I said, really? Now, I wasn't even thinking about it. I, I really wasn't even thinking about it. I was so caught up in watching the class, and I was so, it was such an incredible place. This building we were in was, had actually housed Civil War soldiers. Wow. Wounded soldiers. And what city is this in? Lima, New York. Okay. It was an amazing building building. I mean, in this room that we were in was like a giant courtroom, old style courtroom with like 36 foot windows and wow. shades. And it was just, you could just smell history in it, right? Yes. And so we go, I go to the meeting. We go into the meeting. Now, Kathy knows nothing about this. And in that meeting, the meeting goes by about an hour and a half. We're concluding the meeting. Kathy goes, oh, by the way, can we have a dog? Can we bring a dog with us to the meeting or to the to the campus? And he said, you know, we get to talking about. It. I went, oh my God. It struck me because I wasn't thinking about what had happened. I was just going through the day. Oh, and you hadn't told Kathy what your fleece oh, was. Oh no way, no <laughs> way. This is private. This is just between me and God. Okay. And then I then I said then I explained to him what had happened, and and I said this is amazing. We're not done. Kathy, meanwhile, she has her own private fleece. We find out that we need a three-bedroom apartment because we have three children, and uh, boy, girl, boy. And so we have to be able to have a three-bedroom, and she wants it on the campus. And she says to herself, this is between her and God, she says, God, if you really want us to go, you have to make a way. Well, we found out we were going to be on a list, a very long list of people to get into this apartment. Two weeks later, Phyllis and her make plans to go to New York. Phyllis is going, listen, you're going to have to look for an apartment off the campus. Let's go see what we can find. They're on their way. They're about through Canada. And I get a call from the campus from Connie. And Connie says, Kevin, is this Kevin? Yes, it is. Kevin, a three-bedroom has just opened up on the campus and it's actually in the dean's housing but they're making allowances for you to do this now they know nothing about any of this nobody does only kathy i didn't know 
Right. I said, are you kidding? My wife is going to flip when she finds out that we've got a place already available to us. But I didn't know that she had made this thing with God. She gets there. She's, now it's done. It's a done deal. You know, the beauty of all of it is, is that when we got there, we were still unsure. You know, you get there about a month into it and you're like, oh my gosh, I, the reality of, I've left a six-figure job. My Christmas bonus was $25,000. Oh, my God. Right? I'm thinking, I've lost my mind. Right? I'm thinking, what am I doing? And then the boot, her parents come to visit. Her father says, they go, he says, hey, why don't you guys go shopping? And he gives them some money, go get some groceries, or um, go get some clothes for the kids because the season was about to change. I'll never forget it. He reamed me for 15 minutes, one upside and down the other. What do you think you're doing? While she was out shopping? While they were out shopping. You had a great paying job. You, were, you had a beautiful home. You were taking good care. And then you just abandoned it. And he just went at me like, y you, you've lost your mind. Wow. You know? And the, the, all of a sudden, he makes this comment. Do you think God is just going to drop food on your table? A knock comes to the door, just as he says it. I open the door, and it's another married student who worked at a grocery store. I think it was called Wegmans out in New York. He says, hey, listen, I know you're new here. I just want to introduce myself. I work at the this uh, Wegmans and you know the all the last day and it's the last day they can sell it and stuff like that uh, he says I've, I've got some food for you right here and he walks in with this box this huge box and he drops it on my kitchen table he walks back out and he grabs two more boxes oh. he's filled the kitchen table up with these huge boxes of groceries and I looked at my father-in-law and I said it's kind of like that <laughs> And then what did he say? He's, he didn't say anything. He never once again ever said anything oh, negative about us being it. in the ministry. This is amazing. He later, in fact, before he went, or before he left this earth, he, he actually gave his life to the Lord. And I, I have no doubt that that moment in time was one of those reasons because he knew God was already ready for him. Wow. And so that sealed it. For us, even though we were there, we were still questioning. That sealed the deal right there. At that moment, I never looked back. I knew this what I was made to do, and I've always known it. And I'm so grateful that God does choose the foolish things of the world. Otherwise, I would never qualify. Wow. So I, I cannot believe. I did not know this story before today. You told me, Peg, I have a story for you. Boy, do you ever. So for anybody who's like wondering what their path is, you need to say what I'm thinking, but I can't say out loud. Don't stop believing, which sounds like a journey song, but. Because <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh my goodness. All the signs are there, you just need to ask. You do, I mean, the scripture makes it very clear. You have not because you ask not. And God doesn't always answer your prayers the way you want him to. He doesn't always you know, guide your path the way you would like it to go. In fact, most of the time he doesn't. I mean, this wasn't something I had planned to do. Right. I, liked making a, I liked making six figures. And then going to where my first year in ministry, I made 20 grand. Wow. And, I, and plus at the church. And then I had a, it was a church in Lapeer. And um, I had a wonderful man, uh, Kevin Daly. He was the representative, just recently was the representative of, Lapeer for years uh, in the state. And I'll tell you, you talk about a great politician. He's a great politician. Kevin said to me, he goes, <laughs> he says, um, when I'm trying to look for a job, I get on the phone. I was going to actually work for this ministry called Teen um, Ranch. And I was going to call Kevin and say, thank you so much for being willing to work with a greenhorn, but no thanks. I picked up the phone, and this is what came out. Oh, hello, Mr. Daly? Uh, could, 
could I come down in about 20 minutes to come check out the farm? And he, he goes, yeah, sure, I'll see you in 20 minutes. Okay, thank you, I hung up. And everybody in the room started roaring because they knew exactly what had happened. God had actually guided my words. And instead of going to that ministry and working at that ministry, I went into work on a cow farm, a dairy farm. And I milked cows for the next two years. And you go, wait a second, you could have been in two ministries at the same time. Why would you go into the cow farm? I knew that what I meant to say on that phone, and it did not come out. Something completely different came out, and I knew it wasn't me. And I said, there's a reason I'm supposed to go there. For two years, I learned more about being in the presence of God in those two years than I have ever before or since. It was incredible. I would go early in the morning and I would milk those cows and God would speak to me and I would worship him. I would just sing to the top of my lungs. In fact, I had a reputation. That's a crazy singing pastor. Wow. Right? While you were milking the cows? While I was milking the cows. Turns out when I left the position to go you know, and just to do ministry, it turns out that Kevin Daly said, I'm really sorry to see you go. He says, it turns out that the, the cows t t seem to give a lot more milk when you milk them than when I do. Wow. And, of course, I knew the secret. Right. You did. <laughs> wow. Kevin, that is, again, I'm just sitting here amazed. I had no idea. I loved it. I wrote every sermon during those two years I wrote while I milked those cows in the barn. I'd literally pull the milkers off the cows. And I'd go over and onto the table and I would just scratch everything I felt like the Lord was leading me to say. And I'd write it all down. And when I was all done, I'd go home. And in the mornings, I would just meditate on that and, and, and finish my sermon. But everything I needed for my sermon was right there while I was working at milking those cows. Wow. Well, you were it so close to the time. earth. Hmm? You were so close to, really, you were close to the earth. You were close to creation. So you were creating what, you were so open to getting the messages, and you were doing a task that's very um, monastic, actually. That's too big a word for me. Oh, uh, well, the monks in monasteries usually go about their daily chores, and they're always praying and meditating while they're doing it. Oh. And you were kind of in a monastic state, even oh. though you were in a, you know, in the middle of a pasture. But what an opportunity, and you knew. I had that happen once. I, I had no intention of saying what came out of my mouth. <laughs> and I ended up going to Ireland with my parents. I wasn't supposed to go. <laughs> and actually, there's a whole book in there about what happened. It was an wow. amazing thing. But the words came out, and I said, I didn't say that. Isn't it Something incredible? Something else said that. And I ended up going, and it was a huge, difficult trip, but it was a huge blessing. And I have started the book. I just haven't. But it was a God thing. Yeah, it was amazing. And you know what it did? There was no place for us to live. When we come in here, there were no places for rent to eat in Lapeer. When you or came nothing. back to Michigan, yeah. When, when I came back from Bible school, right? And uh, lo and behold, don't you know, right on that farm, three bedroom home for us to be able to. It's part of the deal. I'm not surprised deal. anymore. When are you going to write all this down and write a book? <laughs> <laughs> you know, people kid and they tell me I should, really should do that. God in the cow pasture. I'll tell you this one thing that was really fun. Okay. Uh, in the barn. As if none of this is fun. Well, no, that no, was okay. about the barn. Okay. Tell me about a the A month barn. into it. It's now, just, just, just for a point of reference, you know, we're getting closer and closer to Christmas. Uh -huh. Jesus was born in a barn. So is this related to Christmas story? Totally. Okay. I'm good with that. Totally. See? Barns, cows. So one of the things I would do is I'd feed them. So we had this feed cart. You know, they're in stanchions, right? Yes. They're facing apart from one another. And then there's a big path in the center. Is that so they don't argue? Uh, no, but... It does make sense, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's a big path in the in the middle, and there's like these gutters for them. Uh, they're troughs, and and that's where all the you know cow manure goes. And okay. Everything. So they're in the stanchions, and by the way, you know they know to go in there when you bring them back in. They know to go to their stanchions. It's amazing. Okay. Um, they, they, it's like, this is my bed. You know Leave which you know which driveway to drive up in, don't you? I, I well, okay. I do, but I. <laughs> No, I'm not a cow either, though. <laughs> so <laughs> they know where their home is. Exactly. And so, I w it was about a month into it, and I had just gotten finished uh, feeding, and I was in the middle of the milk, or, or I had finished the milking. I was just finished the feeding, 
and I park the cart, the feed cart that you kind of ride and it kind of distributes the food and stuff. And I was really feeling sorry for myself. I was freezing cold. My hands were just wet in this freezing cold weather. We, um, we didn't have a lot of food in the, in the, we hardly had any food in our cupboards. And I was just feeling like it was my computers to cows moment. Okay. Where I went, oh my gosh, I really, you know, it, it was, this was different when I was in college. I am letting my wife down, my whole family down, and I said, God, you have to help me. And I kneeled right in front of the st one of the stanchions where the feed was. You know what a manger is for? I do. For them to eat out of. And I'm kneeling right before this area where they eat. And I distinctly sense God speak to me and say, if it is good enough for my son, it is good enough for you. Oh my God. It was the most humbling moment. I don't, I don't think up to that moment I'd had such a humbling moment where I said, God, I'm so sorry that for my complaining, when you've called me to do this, I'm all in, I'm so sorry. And I went on with my day. So I picked myself up and stopped my weeping and put praise and worship on. And I just started worshiping God while I finished everything up. Wow. wow. I didn't know this was the Christmas story, but what an amazing story yeah. for people who are feeling hopeless or that they're not in the right place doing the right thing. Sometimes when you do ministry, you wonder, what am I doing here? Countless examples of knowing God knows every single detail. He knows your every thought, and He still loves me. It's an amazing, well, amazing He's pretty thing. funny, too, so, yeah. Yeah, he is. He's funny. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, he's funny. He huh? likes the funny. I like it, you know, yeah. knock on the door, bring groceries in. That was, that was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> That's my kind of guy. Thank you so much for being here. I think there's going to have to be a part two because you have the whole story of how you ended up in China. And oh, I think yes. everyone wants to know about that. You've gone from uh, milking cows to China. Mm -hmm. We have to have part two. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy to. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for being here. This has been a Christmas, Easter, hope. Uh, this is all rolled into one. Kevin, thank you. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm.